Hello, everyone. Welcome to Getting Real with Andrew Cohen. We have a great show for you today. Today on the show, we have Jacob Schneiderman here, who is my uh, cousin, and he is a bassist for the band True Soul, which is a it's a small band out in L.A. Um, you can see him performing um, at the Mint this week. He's performing this week uh, at, um, when was it? Let's check. Uh yeah, he he's an he's an amazing ba- he is an amazing bassist. I'm not just saying that because he's my cousin. I would, I I tell you guys the truth, okay? He is a he's a great bassist and he's a great cousin, and I'm so excited to have him on the show finally. It was uh we recorded this um we recorded this. He came to my house actually. He came to my house for Thanksgiving, and we uh we recorded it, and it was it went very well, and I think. You guys will really like it. So uh, just double check when when Jacob is performing with his band. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Jacob will be performing at events. Uh, True Soul with special guest Sunday, this Sunday, February 18th from 7 to 8 at the Mint in L.A., that is, uh, you can get tickets at themintla.com. And uh, please enjoy my talk with my cousin, Jacob Schneiderman. Thank you. Ace Podcast. Hey Jacob, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, how did I get you here? This was it's miraculous how I got you here. It's like you're my cousin or something. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, so let's get started. You're a bassist, correct? Yes, I'm a bassist. Uh, I also I played guitar for a bit back in the day. That's how I got my start, and I dabble with. Uh, I dabble with some keyboards and drums and whatnot for my own personal projects. You've dabbled? Yes, I've dabbled. <laughs> you've dabbled? What does, what does dabble mean? Did it mean like you've been playing for like a year? You've been like, you tried something out, did not work? No, it's just kind of a side thing. You know? Okay. like, and, But you found, I guess, you found bass as your like dominant activity? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Mm-hmm. How did How did you get into music? Like, how did music start as a thing for you well um i mean ever since i was like really young like i like one year old one one year old (laughs) one year old (laughs) one one year old uh one years old that's how it's said one years old okay there there we go i'm gonna make sure a year old a year old okay uh my mom would take me to music classes and i'd always be listening to classical music and whatnot and then in when I was nine years old, I started taking guitar lessons, and I got a guitar for Hanukkah. Hanukkah? <laughs> Hanukkah, yeah. Is it, Han- is it Hanukkah or Hanukkah? Uh, it, it's either way. You know, you can you can put the C in the front there so you get the... <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the Jewish. Uh, yeah, but I yeah, for for Hanukkah and... Mm-hmm. Uh, you said that Southern that time. Hanukkah. You said Hanukkah. Yeah, I have some southern roots. You, you have know. some southern roots. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, my my friend Max, we we started playing guitar around the same time, and we kind of had this little competition to see who could learn like the most songs and mm-hmm. who would practice the most. You know, it was a who healthy. Won? I mean, he he still plays guitar to this day. He's a very good player, but mm-hmm. I mean, I I, th- I think I won that. You think you won? Yeah, <laughs> is that are you are you sure you're are you just saying that or you're just what is it on the record? Do you have you was it off the record? Do you think he won? I I don't think so. I think on and off the okay. record. I, I, yeah, I won. Okay. Well, that, that's uh, good. That's 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 not like narcissism. That's like self confidence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's the difference? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Like after a few years of practicing and whatnot, I went to this camp and 
met my good friend Abraham Silbert, who's mm-hmm. a fantastic drummer, and we still play to this day. Mm-hmm. And uh, we formed a band. It was just me and him. It was just guitar and drums. No, we would record bass uh, yeah. on like a di- different track, and we made a band called King Size Bishop. Oh, and, I've heard uh, some of those tracks. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that. And we mm-hmm. uh, we recorded an album called uh, King, or it's actually called a uh, Jamu, Jamu, and, like a uh, Shamu, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the the killer whale. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we, I don't know, we just we'd get together and jam like mm-hmm. every every weekend or so. But and, uh, and you sung on. I remember you sung on one of those tracks. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not much of a singer, but uh, if it yeah. really comes down to it, I can. I can sing yeah. a little bit. We're gonna. We're gonna play a little bit as, as the outro of this podcast. Oh, great, fantastic. Do Do we have the rights? Do oh, do, for for sure. Go ahead. It's all public do have, domain. Okay, we we don't have to speak to like your manager or something. No, no, no. All all the music that we have online is free because we want you to. Okay. We don't want you, no one wants to pay for music. Yeah, nowadays. you'll you'll get a taste of um, King Size Bishop and a little bit of. My cousin singing uh, <laughs> as the outro to this podcast. So, how did you transition from guitar to bass? Like, how was that transition? Well, after King Size Bishop, after we released our first album, uh, I was I had just entered middle school, and for the huh oh uh, for the for the for the string orchestra that they have at at school they needed you know they needed people for it so i started playing i started playing cello in the the orchestra just because that's the instrument they gave me and i i wasn't really liking it that much so i asked if i could switch to bass and they happened to need bass players that year so i started playing in the orchestra and in jazz band and stuff and then i switched schools and went to um oakwood school to high school and yeah, I don't know. I've been playing, I've been playing in the the jazz bands there and in the orchestra, and I'm in a couple bands now where I play bass because a uh, king size bishop doesn't sadly doesn't exist. It doesn't anymore. exist. It doesn't exist anymore because the uh, the bass player he went off to University of Puget Sound to do better and better things. And mm-hmm. you did know. you? So he was like a year ahead of you. He was two years ahead of us. Oh, it was two yeah. years ahead of us. So, you know, when the band was going strong, it was just a couple scrappy freshmen and mm-hmm. uh, this 11th grader who was 10 times cooler than us. I have no mm-hmm. idea why he was hanging out with us, but it was fun to have him around, and he's definitely made a great impact in my life. His mm-hmm. name is Ezra Hecht. He's a very great man. Mm-hmm. So I guess were you able to pick it up? You were able to – I guess you were able to pick it up easier because of your experience with guitar oh for sure yeah going from six strings where you have to play guitar i mean you have to get to play uh yeah chords uh melodies harmonies all that to just playing playing mm-hmm. a one one note the bass note yeah. you know it's definitely it's definitely more simple but uh you know more simple doesn't mean that doesn't mean easier mm-hmm. so they still had you still have to know a lot about groove and laying it down and you know keeping the band together Mm -hmm. i guess which i guess based on which do you like better i guess after playing both bass or guitar i mean i definitely enjoy playing the bass more Mm -hmm. just because uh you know i I also really like classical music so i'm not really a fan of classical guitar i mean i love listening to it but i i can't play it i'm really bad at that stuff yeah but uh you know with the bass i can play classical music i can play jazz music i can play anything i want because you know it's really the the bass is used in every every style of music so and also get like the discipline of playing the the double bass compared to playing like electric guitar you know it it takes a lot of technicality and a lot of, you know, practice and commitment. And uh, I feel like just the process of me learning the instrument was really great just because I had to put a lot of dedication and determination into that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's really just a 
it's it's healthy for your brain to do that you know yeah so now you're in a band called uh true soul is that correct yes i'm in the i'm actually in two bands right now i'm in true two soul. bands yeah you, do you have to choose your allegiance soon or you have to choose your where you bring your allegiance lies soon between both bands that, that decision will probably come and it'll it'll be a hard one but for now i'm just keeping my options open and mm-hmm. playing with both of them as mm-hmm. you know as it comes which one do you like better I I would rather not say on the air. Nobody listens to this podcast. You could <laughs> you could say it and you'll have the same exact effect as if you hadn't said it. Uh, well, be... well, you never know. Actually, this could it could grow into a big thing. So yeah, to to be completely honest, I wouldn't say that I like playing with one band more than the other. Yeah, I I'm not gonna say which band is which, but I'd say okay. that that one one band is. You know, we like it. It's kind of like you know, Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl, yeah, Nirvana, Nirvider, and creator of Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's awesome. So, when he was in Nirvana, he said that they were the Kurt Cobain and the bass player, I forget his name, and himself. They were the best of friends. Like they were, they were always hanging out with each other and like doing doing stuff together, riffing off each other. But uh, that definitely affected their productivity. They only recorded three albums after being together for a really long time, and like they weren't really getting that much, you know, stuff stuff done. But uh, Dave Grohl says now in the Foo Fighters, it's just, they're like they're not really that great of friends in it, but they're strictly business, and they're you know they're and you know like people people say art is just you know for fun and whatever, but you know, it's not it's not just all fun and games when making art. You know, art art is mm-hmm. hard work, and you know it takes a lot of discipline to do that. Yeah. So I'd say I'd, I'm kind of in a similar situation right now. In yeah. One, in one band, I have a like some of my my best friends from middle school, and like all all like you know my best friends just in one group, and we can do whatever we want, and have some fun. But in the other band, you know, it's a little bit we're not you know we're we're definitely friends but we're not the, the best of friends but yeah. we, it's about just getting work done and expressing ourselves and getting getting our art out there that's kind of like the relationship between Penn and teller and if you know this like if you look it up they're actually they're they're you would think they would be like good friends outside but they rarely hang out outside of their shows i mean i bet they're together all the time so yeah but like they aside they they other. have actually they actually have like very different interests and i think mm-hmm. And they said that actually their separation while they're not working and they're on non friendship actually I think it helps their working relationship. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that applies to your other band of like the ones that you're kinda you're kinda you're friends with, but you're kinda like not like the best of friends with? You know, I I'd say it's still important to to do do stuff together and like hang out with each other and get a bond with each other because that definitely reflects in your playing as a as a group because you know you guys are like we're we're connected on more than just a just a you know external level mm-hmm. it's about our relationships with each other yeah so it's definitely good to have healthy relationships but i mean they don't have to be your your greatest friends that you tell all your yeah. deepest secrets to and all that yeah and do every <laughs> and do everything together with mm-hmm. but uh Mm-hmm. But I think yeah. both both kind of work depending on you know like the Beatles were best of friends but you know they broke up so who knows yeah, I mean but, who knows what happens you know in a band one one thing I've experienced a lot too is that in cuz in a group it's not just one person calling all the shots like in a band uh in a band everyone's making decision decisions and contributing and you know a- yeah. adding something to the whole so when one person proposes an idea and mm-hmm. everyone else doesn't like it or is opposed to it, if you if you guys are really good friends and you say, oh, I hate this, this sucks or something, you know, you can hurt their feelings because, you know, it's like coming from your friend, that sucks hearing that yeah. they, they don't like the work that you've made. But mm-hmm. if it's just like if you guys are business partners and, you and can they be say, honest. oh, that sucks. And you say, "Oh, why does it suck?" Because like, "Oh, I don't think that's gonna uh-huh. gonna sell," or "I don't think that 
like people will like that or so what you're you know. saying is i guess without the like the deep friendship you can be more constructive um in a way i mean yeah i I'd, I'd say so or just without the i mean it's good to be constructive either way but less feelings get hurt when you're not as close with the people in your band mm -hmm. and before okay so let's move on before you mentioned nirvana and foo fighters would you say those two bands are um and dave Grohl? do you think those two bands are like big inspirations for your music or if they're not what are your other inspirations well uh influences <coughs> i mean I'd say they were definitely inspirations. I mean, they're not my greatest inspirations, but uh -huh. when I was none of I mean, none of my parents are musicians. I mean, my parents have kind of my mom played like clarinet in band, so it doesn't <laughs> doesn't really, you know, pursue it like yeah. a lot of my other uh friends' parents, but uh you know, my my grandparents and great-grandparents and even my aunt on my dad's side were very good and accomplished musicians uh -huh. kind of skip my dad and kind of uh -huh. passed the, on to the, the you is recessive in your dad yeah the music and then yeah, dominant recessive. In you. yeah so um uh i mean yeah i guess i have some of that genetic mm -hmm. musicianship kind of passed down but i mean my parents didn't really show me that much music i kind of found most of the stuff by myself or mm -hmm. actually through my half-brother ben he, oh th okay he he showed me a lot of music when i was younger but from about ages four to maybe 11 the only album i would really listen to was american idiot by green day <laughs> and that was kind of my upbringing <laughs> that, that's a great album i mean you can't go wrong with Amer you can't go wrong with that album i mean yeah green green day is they're not my favorite band now, but yeah. I definitely have a deep appreciation for them for yeah. laying down that foundation of music for yeah. me. I mean, they just had a really great album. They had, they had many great albums. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. No, I'm just saying the latest one they just did, Revolution Radio. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't really heard that much of it. But... Oh, yeah. They have this song, um, Still Breathing. Mm -hmm. That's really good. They're like, ba da 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 ba 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 da da, ba da da da, da 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 da, ba da 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 da, da 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 da. That's that's really lovely. Da da da. Yeah, it's it's. I write. I recommend. I can't obviously play it on this podcast because. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Um. But I know you should check it out. Yeah. Well. Uh. Well. Anyways. Back to the. Back. Back to you. So, uh, from, so saying, yeah, yeah. Four, four to about 11 or maybe 10 or 11, mm -hmm. just Green Day and kind of that alternative, alternative rock, rock, punk, yeah. stuff I'm, like that. I love, yeah, alternative rock is amazing. That's, I was so sad. Were, were you sad in about a uh, Lincoln Park? Did you hear about that? Chester Bennington? Yeah, that's, it's a really, it's, it's a real shame. It's that, real, it was really sad. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of Lincoln Park, but... Mm -hmm. I I know they had a really big impact on a lot of people's lives, and yeah. that Chester Chester Barrington was really influential. Bar Barrington, and very good guy. It's Bennington so, or Bennington, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's you know, it's, it's fine. I'm not offended. Yeah, it's my favorite band, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, just ruined. I, we just ruined our relationship on the podcast. Oh no! After this, we're going to be very strained. No, I'm kidding. All um, right. Okay, so four to eleven was Green Day. What about after, after age eleven? So then I I kind of started again to more classic rock, like Led Zeppelin and the Beatles, the Who, the Who, the Rolling Stones, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just I was really into guitar players who could just play like insane. Hendrix. Hendrix, yeah. Well, actually, Hendrix was a little bit. A little bit later, but oh. you know, just people who would play like insane solo guitar solos and all Clapton. that. Clapton. Uh, uh. So yeah, that's when I started uh -huh. playing guitar it, and all that. Is it was it has that been like eleven to present or was there another change? Well, 
I mean, I still I still love that music, and I'm yeah. actually starting to like get back into that. But okay. from from then to now, I've had a lot of like peaks and valleys and uh, music mm-hmm. taste, and a lot of different. I've been interested in a lot of different yeah. stuff. You've gotten you've you've tr- you've gotten into different territories. Yeah, I mean, because um, in middle school, I started. I, I was in the jazz band, so I yeah. started listening to a lot. A lot of like blues and then eventually jazz and it all kind of mm-hmm. melded into each other. Yeah, like classic jazz or more, uh, or more like modern jazz. Uh, I'd say more classic jazz, yeah. like John Coltrane, just like those, <coughs> like Duke Ellington, just the people yeah. who kind of just like started it all because that's who we were learning about in school and all that. Mm-hmm. And then um, once I got to high school. And I was in orchestra, and I started, uh, you know, I was I was practicing a lot more, and uh, I joined the Colburn Youth Orchestra in tenth grade, and I was doing a lot of competitions and stuff like that. Okay, I started listening to That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I started listening to a a lot of classical yeah. classical music. Good job. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, a real accomplishment, right? I mean, that's like yeah. pretty big, Colburn, because Colburn's like what one of the best like music schools right yeah yeah and they have really great high school programs there Mm -hmm. so that's yeah it's a real accomplishment yeah definitely good job (laughs) uh (laughs) i mean in terms of classical music though i i still am it's still like one of my favorite genres of music i'm really into baroque music so that's that's anything basically before like 1750 ish okay so that's like i don't listen to a lot of classical music so well it's like yeah so it's like bach that. and bach, vivaldi yeah. and all the you know really like preppy string stuff that you might hear on the radio and all that but i mean some of that stuff is really amazing and that's kind of the point in time where they started to develop what is today like western music mm-hmm. and you know just like really beautiful and raw like just great great music yeah i mean there's there's been some music that hasn't been so great and raw like like what i don't know christina aguilera i I love christina aguilera i don't know i listen to some of her songs i guess it was the song i was listening to so i feel like the music today though is very it's very sexualized sexualized it's yeah. very sexual. It's very like unnecessarily sexualized. Well, I mean, that's how the lyric. That's our society. That's how our society is kind of working with, especially in America, just because of capitalism and all this stuff. Yeah. It's about who. Am I allowed to swear on air? Or... Yeah, you can swear. I I just I don't know people. I forget to tell people in the beginning that they swear, and they just assume they can't. But I don't know. It seems like a lot of podcasts they like. When they swear, they're, like, more popular. I don't know. It sounds right. Sure, yeah. They can swear, yeah. You can. Anyways, they have... It's all about who has the best car. It's about who does the most drugs. It's about who's the yeah. most popular. It's about who has the biggest genitals. Yeah. All that stuff. About... You know, it's just about being the biggest and the best. Uh-huh. And all this, you know, sexualized stuff. It's just mm-hmm. appealing to, you know, just, like, yeah. teenagers and... In uh-huh. like young kids, do you? Just... Um, I guess do. You, it's a weird question. Do you, do you like that? I mean, do you not? No, not do you like that? <laughs> it's um, I'm trying to phrase this correctly. Do you agree with that direction? I mean, as a musician, probably I would guess not, but I could be wrong. I mean, in pop music and popular culture, I definitely see that and i don't think i don't think it's the best thing i think kids could be doing something a little bit better with their time than Mm trying you know putting on a ton of makeup and you know trying to you know show a lot of skin and all that i mean i mean i mean one thing that i don't think it's really the sexualization that's the problem i think just in our society people just do a lot of stuff really I don't know how to say this, but like, there's just a lot of mediocrity in how people do things. I think, and, yeah, I think people 
it take I think people are more accepting of that mediocrity. Yeah, and just people are really lazy nowadays because the internet and just having everything done for them and not yeah. actually you know going through the process of learning mm-hmm. and doing things the hard way. It's you know it's just about doing things as easily as you can. Yeah, I do find that I find that in like the little things. I find that even in like the food delivery systems, there's Grubhub, Uber yeah. Eats. It's yeah, like especially. easier than ever to get food delivered to you. It's like effortless. You could do it. You could do it. I have the Apple TV in front of us. You could do it. You could, there's Grubhub on the Apple TV. You could no way. not get up on the Apple TV and order food. That's actually pretty great. I can't <laughs> lie. But, uh, um, it's kind of hypocritical that we're talking. No, I'm kidding. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm fooling around with you. Yeah, I guess. We're not fooling around. It's, I don't know. I just, I just think the, the internet and just having everything so fast-paced and regurgitated uh-huh. to us is kind of it, messed up. It's like it, I think it also ruins our patience level. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think we become, as a people, we become impatient and we just don't, you know, want to, we don't want to, um, we we can't stand waiting. It's all just about immediate gratification. I, it is, yeah. And uh, I guess, why are you in a phone below? Why isn't it loading? Exactly. It's yeah. my whiny impression. Uh, that was very spot on. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of didn't know what to say. That you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's 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 him. <coughs> it's him in real life. Yep. <laughs> so going back to what were we talking about? How about? Oh yeah, so music sexualization in the media of media. Uh, how did we get there? Uh, that just was by fault. Oh, Christina Aguilera. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I used her as an example. I used her because there's a. I don't know. I take this improv class, and in the improv class, we were doing these lip dubs. And there's this one kid in the class, I won't say his name. He's really, really weird. And he's really just, he's always, he never like, he always has the same character, which is like this weird stripper. Okay. Like male stripper. And he's always like, he's like, uh, yeah. Like, he's always like pretending to be very like sexual. Okay. And it, like, it gets, it's like, it's funny. It was funny at first. But now it gets old, and it's just – and then that's the song he – and we were doing lip dubs, and, that, and he was playing this song on – called uh, – I'm going to look up what the song is called. Um, you know, it was uh, it was like Stripper or something. It was um, – crap, what was it? I'm going to look I'm gonna, – I'm going to find out what the song is. Apple Music. It's the most useful tool. No, I am gonna. It was um, it was in this album. It was uh, it was Dirty. Um, the the song was called Dirty. Yeah. Okay. So, back to the, back to the podcast. Um, so it was called Dirty, and it was like I'm just like really, you're gonna make a song called Dirty. I don't know where like the art is in that. I'm there probably is, but do you? an opinion on that well i mean with with stuff with stuff like that i think art is just a reflection of society or just like a little portion of society and i feel like a lot of women these days yeah or um you know back back in the day like women couldn't vote and had to be very you know conservative covered up yeah but now as time has progressed and like through the 60s and through through everything like that Woo! yeah i mean like, like women the, women have there, there's e- those... equal rights and i feel like through this music they're expressing their you know their their individuality and their ability to you know be able to do something like that because yeah. in the 1920s if they were to do something like that it would be completely completely ludicrous well like, i mean just, in like, the 20s it would have been because it was the roaring 20s i don't know it's it was kind of crazy back then. So I, I, mean, I think it was like the 50s. I think if somebody did that during the 50s, it would have been – because if you look at movies during the 50s, there's no, like, sex. There's, like, there's most – the most you ever see is kissing. So I think most movies, like, back in the 50s and 60s were more um, conservative, definitely more conservative. I don't know. 
I'm basing that on I'm basing my opinion on the 20s on the 2013 Great Gatsby. Mm. Well, I mean, what showed in that, but you know, I mean, nevertheless, I think also one thing about it is it's kind of a marketing tactic used by a lot of big record companies, just because you know it it kind of it, it all that stuff appeals to a lot of people and a lot of youth <coughs> because it's you know it's very it's very primal stuff yeah. it's very primal instincts to uh-huh. you know be sexual and all of that mm-hmm. it makes you think about you know the book the giver yeah it makes you think about because you know they take the shot every day that blue that you know takes out their emotions yeah sometimes i wonder if like life would be better that way i mean i, it, I don't know not. like if they took out <clears throat> sorry guys i'm a little sick um if they took out like certain emotions, like if they took out, um, <coughs> like if they took out, uh, like if they took out all like the sexual stuff from our mind. No, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Uh, actually, that would be just bad. I mean, that's one one big part about being human. But I feel like, like that yeah. that part of our brain now, uh-huh. especially as us as yeah. teenagers in this day society, exactly, with, you know, all the pop culture stuff and porn and all this, like that yeah. part of our brains is just being like it's so being manipulated. It's being manipulated and it's being used in an unhealthy way. Uh-huh. You know, I I think I think it can be healthy in small doses because I think as humans. We need to be able to live through our faults and live through happiness and live through our faults so we can learn from them. So I think in small doses it's okay, but I think what you're saying is right. It's completely overdone and manipulated for our brains so corporations can make money. It's turned yeah. into a conspiracy theory podcast. It's not even a conspiracy. Yeah. conspiracy. It's just the, the corporations truth. are taking over. I mean they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's true. what America is. There's this teacher in my school that I always hear about who's, like, raving on about that. He's always, like, yelling about how corporations are taking over America. When it, and, and, like, shouldn't you be teaching physics? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, how do you think – so do you think in the, you're, in the future you're going to continue your path as a musician? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to go to music school right now. I'm trying to get a – I'll probably get a major in jazz studies and – uh Looking at USC Thornton, uh, Cal State Northridge, mostly schools on the the West Coast, but uh, I mean also some schools out in on the East Coast. Like you a, said that you said that very you said that like East Coast like you think you're better than us? No, I mean I'm kidding. I mean West Coast, best coast, but yeah, West, uh, <laughs> West Coast. Okay, whatever you I mean, say. Be- East Coast, Beast Coast. I mean that doesn't really. Really East around. Coast, I mean, but, I East mean, Coast is... I love the West Coast. I, I can't lie. I, I can't lie either. I'm trying to get out to the West Coast. Yeah, it's, it's I'm great. trying to betray my people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I just, like, I, I, I can't stand the cold. I mean, where I live in Los Angeles, California, it's a good 73 degrees, sunny, almost every Constant, day. Almost every day, it's exactly 73 degrees. Yeah. Never lower, never higher. I, I have no idea how that works, but it just does, you know. That's so cool, but, you know, I wish you luck. <laughs> What's... <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. Heard of a funny joke or something? No, nothing. What were you going to say? I was going to end the podcast. Oh, you're going to end it right now? Do you have Do you have anything else to add? Uh, No. Any other questions? Um, I think we covered everything. Is there, oh, is there any other hobbies you have? Besides oh. music? Well, one hobby that I did have for a very long time was I was really into the X Games and skateboarding and uh, snowboarding, skiing, and BMX and all that stuff. Oh. But I, I broke my leg on a Razor scooter in was that, the eighth grade. Was that the end of your career? And that As was unfortunately the end of my career. I still watch the X Games on TV and the, the Dew Cup and all that, that uh-huh. stuff. But, um, I mean, now, uh, I was on the tennis team last year and the year before that. Uh, I really enjoy, like, film and movies and other art like that. 
Uh, I mean, music is basically my life. But That's not a bad thing. I mean, my my life just kind of revolves around music, movies, and eating eating food, which music, is another movies, hobby. That is a wonderful. Life. I can ask for anything better. Yeah, and living in that LA, sounds like, amazing. You sound and you're connected to everything. And living in LA, I have access to movie theaters and access to great music yeah. and great musicians. You know who and, also uh, has access to movie theaters? Every, every single, single city, every sing, most cities in the entire U.S. also has access to movie theaters. That is true. Yeah, yeah, but just living in the United States of America, being able to go see a movie whenever I want. You know, a lot of people don't have yeah, that privilege. That is that is a wonderful privilege that you know people. I think sometimes people take that for granted, and you know, it was just Thanksgiving yesterday, and I feel like there's we have a lot to be grateful for. Yeah, and just living in the United States of America, I feel like so, that's such a privilege. So yeah, so let's end this podcast. Let's say one last thing. Um, what we're thankful for in the world. Let's make as an official statement. I know you kind of just said what what we're what we're, what we're thankful, thankful for? for. Okay, you want to go first? Well, I'm going to start out with basics and all that stuff, just because it has to be said, and I okay. truly need it. But yeah, yeah. grateful for my family, which includes you, yeah, and my parents. Are you just saying and... that because they're right over there? Oh, uh, that, that is of. one reason. And because, <laughs> you know, my mom's probably going to hear this, yeah. but I'm, I'm kidding uh, around. Yeah, of course. No, of course, of course family, family is very important. They've but, given yeah, me like the best life that I could ever ask for, and you know they they've cared for me they've tended to me spent thousands of dollars raising me you know of, of course i have to thank them they gave me they gave me life they gave me life uh, thankful to god for uh keeping balance in the universe and you know creating the, the miracle of life i'm also very thankful to all the teachers and friends that i've had who have helped me on my musical journey and uh who are gonna help me on the years to come just because I feel like that's such a huge part. That I mean, that basically is my life. And uh, all my friends for being there for me. and Yeah. Yeah. And my health. You know, all the good okay. stuff. So, uh, what are I'm, you thankful for? I'm finally, somebody asked me a question. <laughs> I feel so important. Um, I'm thankful for, uh, I guess, of course, you guys, my family. Uh, I'm thankful for that they're able to provide for me and, you know, despite, you know, any challenge that comes up, they're able to support me in my artistic endeavors and support me in my dreams Yeah, and be able to, you know, because I sometimes I forget that not a lot of people can, you know, do this stuff. Not a lot of people can play music. Not a lot of people can afford to play music not a lot of people can afford to you know run a podcast not a lot of people can afford to see movies or try to make movies and or write or and i'm just i sometimes i'm thankful for the fact that i can and my parents support that and i'm thankful for the chance to you know do this podcast i mean i've i'm thankful for i know that sounds very materialistic but uh i'm thankful for the chance that i've been able no, to no. talk to the people who I've gotten to talk to, mm -hmm. and I've been given the chance to talk to, and, I, and continuing talking to interesting and interesting teenagers like you and others, mm -hmm. and yeah, and I'm thankful and thankful for I don't know food. Kind of just good. That had a melodramatic ending. I was like, "Thank you for family, family podcast," and I guess food. Yeah, I mean. How thankful for I mean, food. food. Food is we we definitely take food for granted on a daily basis. The fact that we can have three meals plus a day, snacks and plus snacks, yeah, and have that readily available. I mean, so much of the world is starving right now that you know it shouldn't be taken for granted. And also, you shouldn't just waste waste food and all that. You should yeah. uh, you know definitely support your Port, uh, lo local, local homeless bank. shelters, lo local, local food, food banks, bank. yeah, and also just you know, yeah, donate I, donate money. That's why what I do is every time that we go to a restaurant, unless I know that the place is gonna like you know any leftover food is um given to like uh, 
you know, homeless shelter. I try to finish my plate. Yeah, you should. And also, just if you... I'm full believer of that. <laughs> I mean, if you see some guy on the side of the street and he doesn't have a uh-huh. meal to eat, uh, and you're outside of a restaurant and you're going to that restaurant and you have a little bit of spare money on you, I mean, it does... You know, the get, the joy of giving is sometimes way more way more enjoyable than receiving yeah it's great you know to it's just it's a great thing to do is to give back to people and you know what i like to do is you know i actually a cool thing to do is you know what i want to try to find is you know have you ever tried to find one of those things that you know you can like sort of help underprivileged kids like play music and because i know there's an organization near me that does that and it's like you're able to like teach kids how to play music and um have you ever thought of doing something well i actually did do something like that that. for for quite a while it's a actually my friend abraham silbert his his dad Uh is uh he he used to be part of this organization called the harmony project Uh and in los angeles you know a lot of Uh a lot of the budgets for um for public school uh, music programs has been cut. So yeah. they have a lot of after school programs where, you know, instruments are provided to these kids and yeah. they get lessons. And I was actually, you know, mentoring some students there. Uh, I mean, you know, I just that making sure that kids have, you know, a way of expressing themselves and yeah. a way of like keeping them on track. I feel like that's also very important. Yeah. And I not s- just, you know, mat- uh-huh. you know just. I mean, of course, you need the bare necessities yeah. of food to function, but, you know, it's not just about surviving, it's about living. Living, yeah. I just read, you know, this, this book you should read, it's very interesting, it's all about that, it's about, uh, it's called Station Eleven. Oh, really? And it's all about, it's like, it takes place like post-apocalyptic, and it won the, I guess it was like the, um, I know that it was like this big award for like science fiction. And it won it because it was about post about public, but it wasn't about that. It was about the passing on of culture from one generation to the next. And I think that's really important. And I actually we got we got something from the we got something from the Harmony Project. And I convinced my parents to give money and to convince them. Great. So thank you so much for joining me. This was so much fun. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. See you guys. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.